Some days ago, the Benin Traditional Council released a statement uh, saying that the Oba of Benin is the only traditional ruler in the whole of Edo South. What do you think about this? Well, we, as I said, nobody is contesting the fact that the Oba of Benin, His Royal Majesty Ewari II, is the chairman of the traditional council in Edo State. Uh, we have so many autonomous communities in Edo and Delta State. And nobody is going to take their right of place. Above Benin cannot say, for example, the Obi of Mbiri is no longer the Obi of Mbiri. Or the Obi of Ibonto Gmiru or the Obi of uh, uh, Oniji and so on and so forth is no longer the Obi of Mbiri. But they all respect him as the Obi of Benin and the chairman of the traditional council. I will not want to join issues with uh, those who are saying, is the only known king. There are kings and there are also kings. Okay. So the word is that live and let live. Hello, beautiful people. I welcome you to this edition of the Namen TV show. And I remain your own faithful Lichikwemeka, the Unify Igbo's non proponent. I am with a true son of Igbanke the president of the Ebanke General Union worldwide, a big fish and an illustrious son. I will give you the opportunity of introducing yourself properly to our viewers. Thank you so much, Shukwemeka. Uh, my name is uh, Engineer Dr. Arthur Osaretin Usiago. As he said, I'm the president of the Banking General Union Worldwide. Welcome to my little abode. Thank you, sir. I mean, uh, the hospitality has been tremendous, and this is what we are going home with, to tell our people that the Ibanke people are indeed hospitable. Thank That's you, sir. Quite correct. That is uh, synonymous with uh, the attribute of a true son of Ibanke land. Thank you, You're sir. Welcome. Yeah. All right. Today, um, is a big day in the in the in the history of the Ibanke people. That's true. The Ewagi. You pronounce it Ewagi. I mean, from the part that I come from, we call it Ewaji. The G, the G, I believe, is still the same thing because it's the staple, the king of staple crop. That's yam. Right. Tell us about this occasion. Yeah, whether it's G or G is just a matter of semantics. Okay. Uh, today we are happy. It's a big day in the Ibanke land. Uh, Ibanke is made up of uh, six autonomous communities. Uh, we have uh, Ibonto Itumiru, we have Akeobuba, we have Olije, we have Ota, we have uh, Itumodi, and we have Omola. These constituent parts make up the homogeneous Ibanke. Even if, in terms of structure, they are heterogeneous in nature, but we are one Ibanke. Now, we are in Ibonto Itumiru land. And today is a wonderful day in the annals of history of the banking. We are having our annual Igu festival. Uh, whether you want to call it Iwagi or Iwaji, as I said earlier, it's just a matter of semantics. Uh, basically, we're happy that God has given us another 365 days to celebrate his goodness, to celebrate everything about the wholesomeness of God. And uh, we, Ibonto Edumuru people, decided that this, on this auspicious moment, we are going to have a get together, you know, to thank God for this wonderful time. And the instructive thing about it is that uh, this morning, uh, we went to the palace of the Ubi, the Nugi of Ibonto Edumuru, His Royal Highness, uh, Solomon Wafiokun Morodion. And he performed the normal traditional rite of uh, giving us pieces of, uh, you know, new yam and uh, pelting it wonderfully with uh, a local sauce, which we make here in Ibonto Idumiru. I may not want to go into... Yeah, the but you can tell us the name. The consequence of that <laughs> special sauce. Okay. Uh, it's black in nature. Okay. He pelted the new yam after the traditional roasting of the of the yam and you see mammoth crowd gathered in that place so many joyful 
people coming around to partake in these uh, solemn and very, very happy, you know, uh, arrangement. And the king gave it to us one after the other. And it's also important for me to say here that uh, we, do, we do this every year. It symbolizes peace. It symbolizes a uh, great gesture on the part of God who has given us life. It symbolizes our happiness that uh, for a year we planted our staple, which is the yam, and we harvested it. All of us came out here in Hati, and uh, we harvested and uh, we are feasting that God has kept us for another one year. Uh, today, apart from the traditional eating of the yam, which herald the opening, you know, that uh, anybody who is a son and a daughter of the banking land can actually go ahead and commence the proper eating of the yam. So it eventually means that uh, even if uh, some people have actually partook in the eating of the yam, have been issue, but they were doing it, you know, not officially. So today is the official lunch and the official approval that everybody can go harvest his yam and eat. So that's why we are happy. It's another one year of beauty is another one year of uh, merriment. Interesting thing is that um, our king, His Royal Highness Solomon Wafiopo Morodio, is not totally based in the country. He is in the diaspora and uh, he flew in from the United States of America. He does this every year to join us in this merriment. And all of us are elated and so happy to have him in our midst once again. So we are happy. Similar thing is happening across a bunch of land. And it's a joyful thing. And um, the grand finale will be later this afternoon, where you can see I'm dressed, ready yeah. for the occasion. All of us will be conglomerating in the same vicinity today to have uh, a, a festival of love, a festival of beauty, a festival of color, a festival of enjoying the new year, a festival of good health, to give God the glory that yet is another 365 days. And that is what we are going to do today. And you see lots of food, lots of drinks, all in wonderful area. And it's going to be a beehive of activity today. Wow. And we are indeed grateful to God Almighty. This is wonderful. This is absolutely wonderful. The way, I mean, your oratory has really been on point. I mean, Thank giving you. us, painting it with different colors, making uh my uh viewers to salivate i'm sure and wish already. yeah they wish they are here but then i promise you my viewers that next year definitely the naman tv crew will be in ibanke to celebrate with the good people of ibanke over there Iwagi. all right over to the uh, affairs of the day the ibanke people and their relationship with the ika tell us about this well, you you want me to go into historical, you know, perspective of uh, the evolution of Ibanke people. Thank you. As I said earlier, that uh, we have six autonomous community. Now, it is true that uh, there are different historical background on the evolution of Ibanke people in this time. Ibanke is a very very unique town. We are a wonderful people lying within the 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 boundary between current Edo and Delta State. Uh, it's just a, a main geographical arrangement when you say Edo and Delta. We, the bank people, would have been much more comfortable to say Bende. Because when you say Bende, you remove the dichotomy between Edo and Delta. Because the truth of the matter is Edo and Delta, they, they are just kit and kin. the same thing. Now, breaking it down to a banking, and a car. I can tell you that yes, some people we want to tell you that we speak a banki. Some in their own understanding will tell you we speak a car. But basically, there is no difference between the banki language and a car language. Uh, if you go into history, they'll tell you a banki people. Some came from Benin. Some, you know came from Mbiri, some came from the Ishan part, some came from the Igbo land. Well, no matter how you want to look at the historical background and the evolution of Igbanki people, the truth is that Igbanki people were 
in uh, those states in terms of uh, geographical location uh, because of the creation of Edo and Delta, as I said before. But our kids and kings, they are all from Agbo. And you know that the Agbo is a commercial nerve center for Ibaki. Uh, and if you look at Agbo, basically you discover that the preponderance of the population of the people in Agbo are also from Ibaki. So you cannot in any way extricate Ibaki from Agbo or Agbo from Ibaki. You can live with a Mari and basically we are the same thing in terms of historical antecedents. All right. Okay. Um, I have uh, these questions here which is related to um, the Ibanke and Agbo relationship. Yeah. All right. Um, I have here um, the Agbo district consisted of all other Eka kingdoms such as Owa, Umunede, Agbo, Ibodo and others until Ibanke communities were removed against their will. This is sometime in the 1936-37. And um, it goes, uh, it is possibly, it is possible to weaken the district. The Ibanke at that time saw it as imposition and oppressive. How do the Ibanke people of today see this particular? Well, it depends on the author and it depends on which perspective you are looking at these uh, historical background. I I read the history of Ibanke from different angles. But I must say that uh, some years back, uh, as early as in the 1930s, the Ibanke people were having a very, very sound relationship with the Agbo people. And um, they normally go to Agbo for the Native Council meeting. You know, it, it was, I read one part of the history that uh, it was recorded so many years back that um, one of the kings in the banking who came late to one of such meetings and the Ubi of Agbo, as it were then, ordered that the king should be flogged. And uh, that, you know, annoyed so many people in the banking and said, that cannot happen. And because of that, most banking people decided not to attend the meeting. So as I said earlier, they were kids and kin, they were brothers and sisters, and they were having a kind of a, a very, very symbiotic relationship between the car people. I'm talking about Agbo now Agbo. and the Banke people. So whatever has happened in those days, of course, you know, we were not born. These were just history. But that has not in any way affected the relationship between the Banke people and Agbo and people. people. So okay. we still believe the Agbo people are our brothers. And they were, some time ago, the Banke people made a very powerful representation to the Agbo cultural you know, organization called Ogwaika, you know, and uh, we are not in any way uh, uh, running away from our brothers from Agbo. So we still, for me, I still see Ibanki people as part and parcel of Agbo people, and Agbo people as part and parcel of Ibanki people. We speak the same language, and our tradition are just the same. So okay. there is no discrimination there is no demarcation all right between these two brothers this is good to know i and that is why we seek you out because we know that you have a very vast knowledge about this history all right over to the next question um are you aware that out of uh the over 10 acre kingdoms that the Ibanke communities are the only ones that no longer use the obi kingship title which is an independent king title uh how do you feel about that um, and uh, would you like Governor Obaseki to restore the Obi titleship? Yeah, so, some of us are already raising some worries about it. But when I was a little child, my mom is from the other side called Idumodi, and my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, late Ehijato of blessed memory. If you go to that street, today that street is called Obi Street. Now, the streets leading to the palace of the Noge of Ibonto Idumero, the Obi of Ibonto Idumero, is called Obi Street. For me, I think it's just a matter of uh, semantics and administrative confidence. Uh, you, you cannot take it away that the, the uh, reign of the Oba of Benin transcended up to each other those days. So nobody is questioning that uh, the Oba of Benin 
those days. For example, when we had a do and data in one, you know, entity called Bendel, Bendel. that the hegemony of above Benin transcended up to Asaba and Onisha. Mm -hmm. Nobody is contesting that. But when communities are developing and uh, it is not out of place for them to also take their destinies in, in their, their own hands. So the nobody has stopped us from using the OB of Igboto Igmiru, the OB of Itumoti, the OB of uh, Uliji, and so on and so forth. So if you know the Oba of Benin is the chairman of the traditional council in Eto State, so if for administrative convenience he decides because of linguistic uh, you know convenience and he decides to say he's a noke or whatever for me it's a matter of semantics nobody can take away the fact that the obi of Ibonto remains the obi of Ibonto Ibiru, and the obi of akiobioba remains the obi of akiobioba and uh, i think it's just a matter of semantics and we should not lose our head about that. okay all right thank you sir thank you for the uh, answers okay i have another question here the question number three uh, which goes uh, some days ago the benin traditional council released a statement uh, saying that the Oba of Benin is the only traditional ruler in the whole of Edo South. What do you think about this? Well, we, as I said, nobody is contesting the fact that the Oba of Benin, His Royal Majesty Ewari II, is the chairman of the traditional council in Edo State. Uh, we have so many autonomous communities in Edo and Delta State. And nobody is going to take their right of place. Above Benin cannot say, for example, the Obi of Mbiri is no longer the Obi of Mbiri, or the Obi of Ibonto Dimiru, or the Obi of uh, uh, Oliji, and so on and so forth is no longer the Obi of. Mbiri. But they all respect him as the Obi of Benin and the chairman of the traditional council. I will not want to join issues with uh, those who are saying. Is the only known king. There are kings and there are also kings. Okay. So the word is that live and let live. Okay. Thank you. You're quite uh, yeah. depth no, uh, wisdom here. Okay. Uh, we have this. Uh, some are of the opinion that the banker would have would have more free will if they were to be under Igwebe local government area in Edo State Central with their Ekman relatives.